take everything I say and just throw it out the window. It's about what works for you. It's about learning about yourself and knowing yourself. I call it the anti-plan plan. It's the anti-diet diet. This is what worked for me. These are practices and tools that I've gathered along the way that brought me back to balance, that brought me back to myself, that brought me to peace. It's something that you don't have to spend a dime to do, and you can do it all yourself. My crowning effort in that book is assuring people and encouraging people that you are the answer to find your whatever it is you're seeking out in your life, self-love, peace, discipline, ridding yourself of chaos, doubt, confusion. It's about going inside yourself and tuning into you because you have the answers in there. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. Today's guest, Eben Britton, is a former NFL lineman turned performance coach, podcast host, author, and speaker. He teaches techniques in breath work, yoga, meditation, and stress management. He's the former co-host of Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson and now hosts his own podcast called The Ebon Flow, which is also the title of his book, which I just learned is now on Audible, uh, which you can grab on Amazon as well as uh, Apple and Kindle. I know I've read it on Kindle. Ebon, man, welcome. Glad to have you. Dude, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I've been excited about this for a while. That's that's true. I could text you names of friends that uh, that would confirm that. So. I want to I want to start a little a little I don't know I'll, I'll jump around a little bit if that's okay but I heard you recently say something to the effect of you've been maybe for the last year or so like you decided to follow your energetic voice mm. where does that lead you where is your energetic <laughs> voice taking you over the last year oh man that's a great I love that question dude. <laughs> <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> I, no, it's a good one. I know you do. You you're doing it. Um man. It's such a good question. And um it's essentially become the for lack of a better way to put it, the dance of my lifetime is to constantly be tuning in to what's happening inside of this thing. We call it Eben. Um, I, spent, I spent a really long time believing that life had to be done the hard way. And I had to fucking grind it out. It's going to be a lot of hard work. And while what's interesting is, you know, I've got this guy who, who he's fantastic. He runs my social media. He's just a wizard cutting clips and he cuts these clips and they get posted and they're very polarizing, you know, so the, for the most part, they're very much positively received. However, you know, there are definitely people who take it as with anything, you can interpret it infinite number of ways and take things that I say and make it into something else or say that, no, that's not true. And, and what I've realized is that so much of what I talk about Perhaps it's true on one plane of existence or one plane of consciousness, but that's not necessarily true on another plane. Mm. And what I mean by that is life still is super challenging and there's so much adversity. Like you face adversity and difficulty and discomfort and, and challenges every single day. That's what life is. Life is literally this non-stop adventure of challenge and overcoming adversity and it takes a lot of hard work however it can take it can be that you have to work hard and simultaneously it doesn't have to be hard all the time like you don't have to be gritting your teeth you don't have to be in tension constantly while you're doing the hard work you know i do a lot of hot yoga 
uh, formerly known as Bikram, 26 and 2. It's 90 minutes of of hell, basically. And it's my favorite thing. It's my ultimate life medicine. Like I go into the hot room and I get to work out whatever's going on. I get to process. It's an opportunity for me. I can't go anywhere. There's no leaving the room for 90 minutes. I have to be there with myself on the mat, doing postures in Shavasana over and over again for 90 minutes. And whatever comes up, I can't escape it. There's no getting away from it. So the things that are happening in my life, my relationships, my work life, my personal life, my relationship with myself, my relationship with others, I get to confront all of this stuff. And I'm just there with it. And I can't go anywhere. And all I can do is breathe and just acknowledge it and be with it. Of course, while I'm talking about this, there's a cat that's having an issue over here i don't know if you can hear that it's pretty funny no um (laughs) you know and so my point is following this thing we we touched on a little a little bit earlier before the pod started but i've gone through a massive life transition my life has completely changed over the last year you know, went through a big shift, ended a relationship. It's been a sort of a, 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 an absolutely miraculous experience, to say the least. And it forced me to take a look at myself and everything I was doing in my life. And I spent eight months of this year living back at home with my mom in the bedroom that I grew up in. And you know, it's not a secret. I've had a I've had a very intimate relationship with cannabis mm-hmm. over the last decade or so, maybe longer. And um, you know, cannabis has been this thing. It's been a very powerful medicine for me. It's been a great remedy for me dealing with a lot of trauma, a lot of pain, uh, helping me cope with a lot of physical injuries, a lot of emotional and mental stress and I was at home and I was outside I think I was smoking a joint one night and my mom came up to me and she said Ed I realized why you smoke so much weed and I was like oh yeah and she goes yeah it's because you never rest and I was like whoa that hit me like a ton of bricks yeah And it was in this moment, this was probably back in March or April, it was in this moment where I was beginning to feel so fucking burned out. I was doing my podcast, I was pumping out two episodes a week at one point. I was teaching yoga, I'm taking yoga, I'm going through this big life transition, I'm spending time with my daughter, doing the best job I can to be a good father, I'm you know, running myself ragged in whatever business opportunity that comes my way next. And my mom, these words came to me and I was like, oh, yeah, I don't. I never stop. Like, I never stop driving somewhere, doing something. And I hit a complete wall, man, like right in that period after those words, it was like this slow trickle to basically running face first into a brick wall. And I had no choice. I literally had no choice but to just say, you know what, I'm just going to turn it all down to zero. I need to put it all on the shelf. I need to stop because I've been running myself ragged for as long as I can remember. Hmm. I've put all of my validation of myself, all of my self-worth has been compartmentalized into how much I'm doing, how much money I'm making, how much am I achieving, how much energy am I expending? And it wasn't working for me anymore. It just wasn't fruitful. I wasn't getting the return 
that I believed was supposed to come with that. And so I was like, fuck it. You know, I have this incredible opportunity here. I'm staying with my mom. I'm back home. Like, holy shit, dude. I've been in the NFL. You know, I've hosted this, this incredible podcast with Mike Tyson. Like, I've been at the top of the world. And here I am. I'm back at home. Sleeping in the bed I grew up in. Like, talk about bringing it down to zero and being just totally humbled by God. You know, and having to just take a look at myself and where I'm at and going, you know what? Maybe it's time for a change. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it hasn't been pretty. It hasn't even really been that graceful for the most part. There's been a lot of resistance. The one thing I can say is that over the last eight years since leaving the NFL, I've cultivated an ironclad daily routine that incorporates breath work, meditation, movement, fueling my body with nutrient-dense, nourishing foods, keeping this vehicle as strong and resilient as I possibly can. And then combining that with the with breath work, meditation, yoga, other movement, making sure to spend enough time out in nature, understanding that I'm not in it alone, which is another thing that's a little bit of a mind fuck for me. It's like, hey man, if you're really struggling, pick up the phone. You know you've got at least one person on this planet that you can call and share yourself, share your heart and your soul with, whatever's going on inside. So that you can understand, you can unload a little bit of that weight. I learned that through, initially through my my venture into the 12-step program world and Al-Anon in particular. Uh, you know, we step out of isolation to touch sanity. You know, there's an I in illness, there's a we in wellness. Mm. Like we need each other. And anytime you feel as though you're in it alone and you've got nowhere else to go, and you've got to bear the weight of the world on your shoulders, you're going to get sick. You're going to break down. And so understanding that you have people around you that you can always call. And so that was a big thing for me, man. And I just started slowly but surely. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start focusing on myself. Rather than saying yes to everything, first I made this commitment. I'm just going to say no to everything. Mm. I'm going to teach yoga. I'm going to take yoga. I'm going to spend time with my daughter. Let me start there. Let me see. Let me see where that takes me. I had to put my podcast on pause. It was just, you know how it is. It's a lot of work, man. The podcast is a full-time gig. Yeah recording the episodes which i love i love having the conversations i love spending time with people i love sharing i love the the whole podcasting medium that really speaks to me and it always has however running a successful podcast it's so much work Mm. and on top of everything else i was doing it was just like I need to just put this on pause, which felt like a huge thing for me. I was like, fuck, I'm going to disappear. Nobody's going to care. You know, it's all going to shit. All the mind noise. Yeah. And really, that's what I've learned, man. It's all just mind noise. You know, and so through this process of turning it all down to zero and really starting back at square one. I learned so much about myself. I learned so much about the flow of energy. I learned so much about my divine purpose. I learned so much about what it means to get into alignment with the universe. Mm -hmm. And because when you're filling up your day with all of this stuff, you're willing your way through your life and doing it and making it all happen. And you're striving and you're grinding and you're hustling and you're doing all the stuff. 
there's no space for the universe for God to come in and bring you what you're actually meant to be involved with. Um, yeah. Well, let, can I can I follow up on that for a sec? Yes, of course. Because I'm curious with that. I think that's an amazing point. And the thing I struggle with, like you're speaking to me at this point, because I, yeah, I, man, I do a lot. I do a lot of shit, right? I'm, I'm involved in a lot of things. You mentioned the podcast, you know, my, my, my education company, the content I put, all of these things, trying to build something that, you know, secures and promotes my family and all that good stuff. How, and, and surrendering is essentially what you're saying you did, like surrendering, it always seems like, rightfully so, that's the culmination. Like when you get to the point of surrender, that's when you get the clarity. Mm. But how mm -hmm. do you know, how do you know when you're at that point and your mother, I know asked that question and it hit you, but how do you know when that hit you even that that wasn't fear and that it was clarity? Does that make sense? Like, are you uh -huh. three feet from gold and you're running away because you're right there. You're right at that edge of where you've, you've stated yeah. that you want to be or, Oh my God. Now I'm clear and I know the direction to go. How do you know that that's the real and right, not right, but like, how do you know that's clarity and not fear? I love that question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. It's a very good question. That's up to you to decide, Yeah, you know? And what I mean by that is like, for me, I was fucking exhausted and I couldn't open up the computer anymore. Mm. So whatever it was, I had lost my will to do it. Like I fucking hated everything. Like I didn't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. Picking up the phone to have a call or doing another podcast or sending another email felt impossible. And I think that's a big, that's an important distinction between burnout and feeling like you just are going to give up. You know what I mean? Mm. And one of my great mentors of my life, he said to me, Eb, the only way we learn is being out on the field. You don't learn on the yeah. sidelines, yeah. you know? So in that vein, with that message in mind, I don't know what the distinction is between clarity and what was the word you used? Fear, fear, just being and afraid fear. of yeah, breaking through or whatever, right? I don't, uh, you know, you can only know that on, when you try it. Yeah. And here's the thing is I had this interesting experience just recently, actually, because as I've turned it all down to zero, now I'm 11 months, you know, call it eight months into this process of really just surrendering to what's going on in here, which essentially it's as boiled down to do I get a workout in today or is today a rest day? Am mm -hmm. I going to do hot yoga today or is today a rest day? And the ego will fuck with you on that too, because then you go so much into, because I, I've, I've used this analogy before where at one point in my life, man, I was 98% action and 2% rest. And that I ran myself into the ground with that ratio of living. Now I would say I'm 60% rest, 40% action. That 40% of action, though, my energy is so much more potent. I'm so much more activated and engaged in the things that I'm doing that I'm able to show up in a bigger, more powerful way to the things that I'm doing because it's more focused. It's more distilled down. It's more concentrated. My energy is concentrated. I'm not dispersed in a million different places. 
you know, having this phone call over here for the psilocybin therapy center, you know, that's barely got a deck pulled together. And I'm like trying to involve myself or I've been asked to be involved with it in some way or then doing my podcast over here and then teaching yoga over there and then trying to be a dad back here. And, you know, and my energy would just be dispersed in a million different places. And lately I had this experience where my second book is starting to percolate. I'm starting to work on it, starting to come through. I do my wellness consulting for this company out in Venice. I go out there once or twice a week, take the entire employee staff through yoga, breath work. I sit with them one-on-one, -on -one, help them process whatever it is they're dealing with, professional, personal. Wow. I teach yoga. I take yoga. I spend time with my daughter. I spend time with the people I love. I do podcasts to keep the message out there and alive when I'm asked. And the road, the pathway, because we're essentially in this ocean of life, there's infinite possibilities. There's infinite opportunities. Any which way you look, like you could go and do anything you want. We're not necessarily meant to do that, though. You know, and as I've really focused my life and my energy, it's like I'm looking down this one lane highway straight down towards the horizon and there's the sun and it's super clear and it's super straight and I know exactly what I'm doing. And then a couple of weeks ago, I get a phone call. Hey, man, and it's a guy from the past, a guy I really like. I, I like this guy a lot. I've spent good time with him. He's got a heart of gold. He's actually excellent at what he does. And he calls me up with this opportunity, an opportunity that two years ago, I would have said, yeah, let's go. I'm in. Let's fucking do it. Even maybe a year ago, I would have said that. Mm -hmm. So he calls me up and he said, he gives me the whole spiel. And because I'm a little further down the path, I said, you know what, man, let me think about it and I'll get back to you. That was like three weeks ago. Then he, he followed up with a text like maybe earlier this week or beginning of or end of last week. And I thought to myself, Ed, why did you even say you would think about that? Mm. Because in my mind's eye, I'm looking down this one lane highway that's straight, straight ahead to the sun to everything I've ever dreamed of and my destiny path. And this thing's like over here. Why the fuck am I going to divert my energy and my attention over here? You love the guy. Yes. It sounds like a good idea. Sure. But that's over here. That's not in alignment with this path that we see that's so clear and crystalline. Why are we going to divert energy over there? Yeah. You know, I should have just said no. I yeah. should have just said, you know what, man, I appreciate it. It's not for me. Let me, maybe I'll connect you to somebody who would be a better fit for that. You know, and the only way I would have gotten that clarity, I would have come to have that clarity is by doing what I did. It's by starting to listen to the happenings inside of myself. And I was just having a conversation earlier with my best friend and, she goes, I'm starting to feel anxiety about doing work for other people. Hmm. And I was like, I know that feeling. I know that feeling. Because we get so lost, not necessarily lost, but there's a point in which it hits you like a ton of bricks that your energy is dispersed everywhere but where you want it to be. Yeah. And only through a daily, breath by breath, moment by moment practice of very intentionally bringing your attention to exactly what you feel is in alignment with what you want to create in your life. 
you disperse your energy in every which way but the way you want it to be. Does that make sense? It makes a ton of sense. And I'm thinking about you, right? Your your backstory, your history. It's interesting. I, I'm, I'm going to try to frame this question. I, I don't know if it'll be clear initially, but bear with me. <laughs> um, but you like you talk about, uh, what did you say? Uh, tuning into what's happening inside of this thing called Eben, right? And I think about your NFL career. The, you sustained some shitty injuries, crap, like sciatic nerve pain, right? Like you, you went through a lot physically, which, you know, that's the NFL. But there's, I think, and you can tell me if I'm wrong on this, but I think there's also a sign in that, right? Like for you, you you brought yourself to the edge, 98% action, right? And you were all in busting up people until you crashed. And after that crash, you pivoted. You got yoga, meditation, all of these things, these disciplines that you you teach now. And then that went to 98%. And then it mm-hmm. crashed, right? And now here you are. You're in this space where you've you've kind of figured out the 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 formula for you around breath work and your daily practice and everything else. How do I ask this? I, is it possible? Is it possible? That's, do you think it's possible for you to stay at forty percent action, sixty percent rest, or is your wiring and is the peak performance? I don't know, formula that you're going to have to run that to 98% again before you crash at the next level. (laughs) Well, this is my, this is my own question because if we're always redlining the machine, if we're always redlining it, inevitably you blow out the engine. Yeah. Inevitably. Isn't it more efficient and more sustainable to keep your engine revved maybe like 50, 60 percent? And you're you're humming, you're cruising. It's like the, the hare and the tortoise. Sure. You make your energy more sustained so that you never burn out. But how? Like, so let's say you find, you know, you, you're a new relationship that's hot and heavy, right? You find a woman that's just, wow. Like, how do you tell yourself, dude, idle, stay at 40, <laughs> right? Don't fucking go to 98. Like, how do you do that? Is it breath? That's work? the Is yoga. That's, yeah. that's the yoga, man. You know, yoga means union. Essentially, it's a union of mind, body, and spirit. And for me, what that means is how do you find, it's like Zen yoga. It's finding the middle way. Yeah. So you're right there in the middle. And honestly, what that, what that requires, Jamie, is a lot. The practice is less in the action because the actions will inherently take care of themselves. The practice is in the letting go. Is in the... Okay, let me put it down. I found this thing. It's my savior. It's the savior of my entire life. It's everything I've been dreaming of. It's everything I've ever wanted. Let me put it down. Over and over again, let me put it down. Ooh, I pick it up. I love it. I, it's it, This is the answer. This is everything I've ever dreamed of. It's everything I've ever wanted. Let me hold it and squeeze it. I want to just squeeze it and kill it. No, I'm just going to put it down. Yeah. Let me just put it down because the answer is in me. I'm the answer. You are the answer. We are the answer. The individual is the answer. There's nothing outside of us is the answer. Because essentially what we do is we make this thing, the thing that makes us whole, the person, the job, the success, the money, the stuff, the car, all the stuff that that becomes the answer that fills the hole inside. So let me fill my own hole. Let me fill my cup. And what does that mean for me? That means getting enough rest. That means spending time with the people I love. My relationships are, have become the most important thing in my life. My relationships with my loved ones and my people. It's the most important thing because I know if those relationships aren't good and they're not in working order and they're not fulfilled and connected and engaged, nothing else can be good. 
how can anything else be good? How can I be good in my job if over here, my relationship with my daughter is going to shit? Or my relationship with my family or my mother or my brother, whoever it is, it's going to shit. How can my life be good? So it's a practice of recognizing that my happiness, my sense of fulfillment, I am responsible for that. Take accountability for that. You are responsible for your sense of wholeness. It's not going to come from this thing. Because like you said, you're going to, you're going to burn that thing out. You're going to always burn it out. The relationship, you're going to burn it out if that becomes your, your saving grace. If that thing becomes the thing that's making you whole, because then what happens as soon as that thing doesn't meet those requirements of being your savior, one wrong word is uttered, one action is taken that's out of alignment with that perception of your savior. What do you do? The fuck is wrong with you? Why'd you do that? How'd you do that? Wait a minute. That's not what you're supposed to do. And then what? The relationship erodes. It starts to degrade. You know, you get the new car and it's fun and it's fucking dope as fuck and it's great to drive and you love it and it's fast and it's beautiful. And then one day you're like, yeah, it's just a car. It's just my car. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And you got to go find the next thing to satisfy the need. So then it's like, how do we get whole inside? And still, because, you know, that's one of the things that's funny to me, you know, there's clips where I'm talking about, you know, the sex and the, the food and the alcohol and the material consumption. I don't think there's really anything. There's nothing wrong with any of those things. However, those things become literally pleasureless when that's what your whole life is built on. Hmm. There's no enjoyment of them when that's your entire sense of fulfillment is attached to this new shiny, sexy toy. There's no enjoyment. It's a momentary enjoyment. So we have to continue seeking out fulfillment, cultivating fulfillment, because it's all here. It's already here. You don't have to do anything. It's right here. You're totally filled and full right here, right now, as you are. You may not think you are because your mind is trailed off in some, you know, some tributary of thought or idea that you're not enough without X. And so cultivating wholeness and fulfillment within yourself, recognizing your love and your enjoyment and your desire of a certain thing and how much it fills you with joy and love and light and be, just be willing to put it down over and over again go you know what i love this thing let me put it down because that's not the answer either the answer is right here inside and to me in my experience this has been my experience the only way to cultivate that sense of wholeness is to go within Meditation, yoga, doesn't have to be yoga, exercise, really meditation, going within and touching that infinite stillness, that infinite peace that resides inside of you at all times, eternally, touching that, cultivating a relationship with yourself, coming to terms with yourself. I use that a lot, coming to terms with yourself. Yeah. Because we're in such resistance to ourselves. 100%. You know, that thing we did that thing we did ten years ago, that fucking the fuck up we made yesterday, the you know, the poor choice we made however long ago, the anxiety about the future job or whatever it might be. Like we're in such resistance to ourselves. We need to come to terms with ourselves. And I was reading this 
Thich Nhat Hanh is one of my favorites. And uh, one, of the, one of the fucking best books I ever read, and I actually read this during my football career, was his book called The Art of Power, where essentially he's talking about that. You know, true power is being totally present and grounded in the moment. Yeah. Because then it doesn't matter. I mean, like you walk into any room, you walk into a room full of entrepreneurs and millionaires, billionaires, whoever it is, and you shine like a fucking beacon of light. You shine like the sun because you're so present, locked in and available to the moment. Um, there's this, he's got these two little books, how to love and how to relax. And in this how to love book, every morning we'll flip it open to a page and he's talking about this married couple or the soon to be married couple who came to visit him in his village. And they said, you know, what do we need? What do we need to have a successful marriage? And he basically said to them, before you get married, take some time, go within yourself and recognize if there's anywhere inside of you that you need to reconcile. What needs reconciliation? Because if there's anything inside of you that hasn't been reconciled, and then you go ahead and you get into a relationship, you're going to be seeking out reconciliation through another person who can never give it to you. It's impossible for someone else to give you reconciliation of yourself. And maybe it's reconciliation with a parent. Maybe it's reconciliation with a friend, a business partner. However, it's always a reconciliation of self, reconciling with yourself, coming to terms with yourself, being good with who you are, the dark and the light. You know, there's this like weird... I don't know what it is in the, in the fucking, I don't know what to call it because to me, it's all just life, you know, yeah. like this is what life is, man. Like we're, we're constantly moving towards being the greatest version of ourselves that we can be and whatever that means for everybody else. For me, it's just meant, how do I feel good every day? How do I feel balanced at peace in my heart every day? There was just so much chaos when I was a kid. It was yeah. just like fucking chaos and like, it was just insanity, you know? And all I've ever been seeking out is peace and learning how to love myself at the end of the day. And, you know, in, in the new, whatever, the spiritual community, whatever they want to, you know, you want to label, you want to put on it, this, this idea of the healing. And just like you mentioned earlier, Jamie, you said, you know, I took this high performing stance that fucking brought me to the heights of success in football, to the highest possible stage. Mm -hmm. And I literally just took that whole thing and I applied it to my own healing practice. And inevitably, I got burned out and I fucking broke myself down again. And I just took all the things that I was trying to move away from in the mainstream conventional path that I took, well, sort of, and I applied that to my healing journey. And it became this thing of like, if you're not fucking doing the ayahuasca or you're not doing this or you're not fucking doing that, you're not enough, man. Mm. You're not enough. You know, and that's a part of it too, is when are you enough for yourself? Mm. When are it's, you enough? It's interesting real quick on that. I, I'm, I'm curious to your perspective on this. Like I, I'm the kid who never smoked a joint. Ever. Still to this day. I've never smoked a joint in my life, right? I love that, dude. Good for wow. you. I don't know if it's good or bad, but, but the, the, right. the thing that I can't like, it's funny. You talked about like finding that, that, that inner self and, and comfort within, <clears throat> excuse me. Like, I, I always say this, like every day I meditate 
And it's like, okay, I, I'm supposed to be somewhere, I guess, right now. Like, you know, like as far as <laughs> like I'm tapping into something, but I don't know what it is. Uh -huh. And it wasn't until I did psilocybin, like a, a mm -hmm. like a, you know, like a five gram dose of psilocybin, like just eating raw mm -hmm. mushrooms. The first yeah. time, dude, it was dark. I had like what I learned from my integration person was my ego coming after me. Like my my intention on it was um, what's blocking me from being the best version of myself. And my mm -hmm. ego came flying at me like an evil force is what I what I learned of it. Right. And it was sort of like, uh -huh. hey, um, I'm not your enemy. I'm here to serve with you. And you put me to the side. Ego's bad. Mm -hmm. Don't let your ego come through. Let the ego sit down. Uh -huh. get, get rid of the ego. Right. And letting the ego kind of almost take over and show me that, hey, a good relationship with your ego or a good relationship within you with the ego, your authenticity, yourself and the ego or whatever um, is actually powerful, right? It, it's what gets shit done on top of keeping you safe and all of that stuff. And the second time, excuse me, the second time I went through psilocybin, I learned, excuse me, I learned uh, from that experience, it was way less dark. I had done a lot of healing work between the two sessions. And that taught me, Hey, look, when you need guidance, there's a, there's almost like a, a, I don't know, like a panel inside of me of like, you know, here's my sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Here's my ego. Here's my, my cognition, my mm -hmm. conscious voice, all these parts of me that you can tap into and we'll make, we'll make sure it's interpreted for your conscious brain. Cause that's what we know. We know what we hear. Like that's just how we interpret this thing that we're on, this journey that we're on, this world that we're in. So psilocybin for me gave me like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, now when I meditate and now when I want to tap into what's the right thing here to your point, like, is this fear or is this um, clarity. Like a sick, clarity? Thank you. <laughs> I forget my own words. Is it fear or clarity, right? Like this is where you need to go. Like that was what I was left with. I was coming out of, as I was coming out of that last psilocybin retreat, getaway, whatever you want to call it was come here when you need that clarity and we'll, and we'll tell mm -hmm. you and meditation gives me the path there how do you it plant medicine it sounds like is something you're almost evolving beyond if i'm hearing you right maybe i'm saying that the wrong way and correct me mm -hmm. of course if i am but could could you could you have the experiences with yoga and meditation and the breath work that you do to find that inner self, to find that thing inside of you, to know that you're connected with the right move next or whatever it might be, right? Like to know that this is authentic. Could you have that if not for plant medicine? Or maybe you're still very much on that journey with plant medicine. I'm just, it's a big question. There's a lot to it, but I think you get where I'm going with it. I'm curious about that relationship with plant medicine because I'm more just diving into it as a you know 40 year old bald dude you know former corporate guy that decided hey i'm going to leave i'm going to leave a corporate job i'm going to leave a few hundred grand a year behind i'm going to travel with my family i'm going to have some fucking fun in my in my in my 40s i'm going to enjoy my life right so plant medicine has given me a path to my authenticity is that real is that an excuse i'm making percent. but well, yeah go ahead I, i'm curious your perspective on this uh, jamie i mean you're you're a fucking gem brother I, I mean, I could, we could we could spend a whole podcast talking about what led you to leave your corporate job. Oh yeah, yeah, it was twenty one I mean, years of that. Yeah, I mean, we could do a whole pod on that. I'd love to dive into that. Like, what led you into that? Um, man, human beings have been participating in plant medicine ceremonies since the dawn of time. It's an incredibly valuable, powerful tool in your tool belt. You're asking me, could I have, could I be where I am or could I come to this place, having this relationship in myself? It's almost like, could you be confident with what you know is your authenticity if you hadn't gone through plant medicine? Because I feel like my confidence has gone up since touching it, where I feel like you're your journey started way sooner and you're more winding down. Like cannabis became a crutch. It sounds like maybe I'm putting words mm -hmm. in your mouth, but um, anyway, no, a thousand percent, thousand percent. No, you're, 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 you're completely, you're totally tapped in there. And I think there will always be a place for plant medicine. And it's really one of those things. I look at people I work with, for instance, 
coaching wise and plant medicine in particular i love psilocybin um i i am so fond of and uh, i love fungi psilocybin is such a powerful tool uh, ayahuasca such a magnificent powerful tool um lsd powerful tool plant medicine is such an important thing and what a divine thing like how the fuck like what a trip dude that we're here on this planet <laughs> and there are these these substances that take us into these other dimensions these other planes of being that give us access to information that otherwise basically unless you're able to spend years meditating in a temple or a cave and <laughs> chanting and doing mantras and right. yoga it's a cheat and sun gazing it's a cheat and code fasting. right exactly yeah. i mean well i wouldn't even say that you know because indigenous indigenous peoples around the world have forever been and still are doing ceremonies very frequently yeah true very frequently and it's simply a a vehicle by which they get clean yeah um and for me it was a very important piece of my process and it has been and I've done a couple ayahuasca ceremonies, got a lot out of it, a lot of information. The first one was a very blissful experience of coming home. Mm. That's how it felt. Yeah. I was coming home. I saw my entire life. It was very much a coming to terms with myself experience of seeing my entire life and every fucking step it was like watching a river flow every single step that i had taken my entire life was perfect mm. in getting me right to where i was supposed to be in that moment the second ayahuasca ceremony i did it was the most uncomfortable miserable experience of my life interesting why i was dropped in to a black hole where i was completely alone and i was like i could see all these people around me but i was so alone mm -hmm. and i wanted nothing but to leave i was like what am i doing here and I had nowhere to go. And I just went and I sat down in my little area and I look across at the shaman and he looked like he was fucking miles away. And I was in turmoil, throwing everything up, just in complete physical turmoil. <laughs> so, and I thought to myself, man, it has been a long time since I felt this miserable. Hmm. And I was so fucking alone. And then all of a sudden, my daughter and her mother came into my mind, and I felt every fucking emotion in the human spectrum come through me, and I burst into tears, and I just sobbed for like the next five hours. Wow. Just pouring tears. Gratitude, love, hopelessness helplessness it's like you name it, it was just like this immense releasing um and you know it's interesting you say that the word confidence because truly in this moment right here right now where i'm at i've never been happier 
I've never been more activated, more confident in my life. And I'd spent a lot of time mired in self-doubt, doubting myself. And, you know, plant medicine is, it's an amazing tool. The issue now is that once again, like we do with everything, the plant medicine becomes the answer. And the, the issue is that the plants, they give us information and they bring us into awareness of things. However, it's still on us to do this work. And as you said, integrate, mm. integrate this into our being so that we can go about our lives more whole, more complete, a more complete being walking through your life. You know, Jamie, how many times have you in your life, maybe I'm just using this as a hypothetical. How many times in your life have you been in a situation and you felt this thing that something you you needed to say something you needed to do something and for whatever reason you couldn't do it yeah and you didn't do it dozens and then you went on and you felt all of this shame and resentment towards yourself and so why didn't i do it you might even have laid awake at night thinking about this thing that you didn't do Hmm. And essentially what I'm saying and what my life experiment has become is surrendering to that and just letting it fucking come out of you. And there's a, there's a fucking process by which you cultivate in yourself the strength and the courage to be able to do that over and over again. And it becomes easier and easier. Mm -hmm. Teaching yoga has been a big thing for me in that you're standing up there in front of 15 to 50 people you're in a 105 degree room with 50 percent humidity it's blaringly hot everybody is <laughs> triggered <laughs> literally whether they walked in with some shit or just because they stepped into the room got blasted with this hot air and their sympathetic nervous system kicked into high gear they're pumping adrenaline and cortisol and all sorts of stress hormones and you're up there fucking cracking jokes and everybody's side eyeing you and (laughs) you have to be up there in your power people are doing all sorts of weird things you're there to lead a class to teach people to take people through this 90 minute sequence and so you know you have to be Like for me, the practice has been, you have to learn how to call out the elephant in the room. Otherwise you just lose people. You lose people. It's like you're juggling this ball. And once you start to, it starts to go to shit and it gets a little weird. And you know, one person's walking out of the room and another person's drinking water when they're not supposed to be. And somebody else is talking or you know, they're fucking around. Two friends came in and they're like talking to each other and it can go wacky real quick. Mm -hmm. If you're not up there and you're just willing to say the thing that needs to be said, feet together, toes and heels touch, lock your knees, contract your thighs, squeeze your butt tight, suck your stomach in, straighten up, get tall through the top of your head. No talking, please. You talk after class. You know, and that's really where the rubber meets the road in life, man. You know, that's where the rubber fucking meets the road. It's like when you're in the life situation and you're feeling that compulsion to speak or act or do something and allowing yourself to just do it rather than standing in your own way for whatever reason. And that's where, you know, if we've been traumatized. We've been damaged mentally, emotionally, physically. All of that stuff creates these blockages inside of us. And sometimes plant medicine is literally the only thing. Talk therapy is good. However, the individual must be willing to share and to go into those hidden places 
because we keep a lot of secrets from ourselves. And that's one of the beautiful parts about ayahuasca, Mama Aya. The first ceremony I did. Yeah. I mean, she goes in and she seeks out all the shit that you're hiding from yourself. Yeah. And there's no running away from it. You're just like, you've got to be with that and recognize it and honor it and allow it to move through you and come out because our mind is so fucking good at keeping us in that status quo place so that we can function and just have this day-to-day existence. And like you said, we're never going to escape the ego. You know, we're never going to like totally shed the ego. The ego is actually the thing that keeps the soul tied to the physical body. Cause otherwise, like, how would we interact? That's a great you point. Know? Great. Point. You know? Yeah. Like you'd be like, here's, um, <laughs> like, how would you even describe me if there wasn't Evan, the performance coach, author, podcast, host, speaker, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Here's been, Eb, the, the floating, being. <laughs> the being. Well, well it's funny it's about not like even interesting. You said uh, uh, this thing that that we call Eben at the beginning, like the meat bag of Eben, if you will, mm-hmm. and and it's like we go back to plant medicine, like that 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 was an experience that I only ever had when when on psilocybin was holy shit. There's that's that's just a body like I, like mm. i couldn't be on that frequency of understanding what you just said very simply you just said it in passing this thing uh-huh. called evan but I, I felt a connection and a frequency on that because i know exactly what that feeling is i know what it is to feel like it's there's a a, a me and then there's the body me. it's all me but there's like a body and then there's the the me the whatever it is the spirit of me the floating apparition to your, to your point mm-hmm. and then there's the ego version of me because you're right without the ego there's nothing to describe me like hey there's this energy ebon welcome <laughs> that would be the intro <laughs> yeah, exactly. of the podcast you know exactly exactly Crazy. he that is known as ebon <laughs> he that is known as ebon oh, i want to yeah. dive in I want to dive into the book here in just a second as we start to wrap up. But um, if you don't mind, I, I, you touching back on relationships for a second, you talked about, you know, like your daughter, or your mom, spending time with the people that mean something to you, like getting really, really focused and clear on that, right? Like, you know, this is what's important to spending time. How do you also determine the relationships that you need to set down or the relationships that you need to set aside or even you know, I call it like putting, putting certain people on the second row of your life. Like you've got your daughter, your Mm. mom, some people like on that front row, but like, what's the decision tree? That sounds so corporate. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's the, Mm -hmm. what's the, how do you make the determination? Like, you know what, this isn't a relationship for me anymore. A friend, a coworker, a a significant other, a former, a former teammate of yours that you were Mm. close with at one point. I, I, yeah, I feel compelled to ask that. Such a good question, man. They're great questions, Jamie. I appreciate it, man. It's tr- true curiosity. I love that about podcasting. People say, you know, how do you come up with questions? I'm like, because this is what I want to know. Like, I don't ask uh-huh. for the audience. Yeah. I don't yeah. think about the yeah. audience. I think about my yeah. curiosity. And, and this is the no, shit that I started studying up on you. I'm like, I got to know this from this guy. <laughs> yeah, that's the best, man. Another one of my mentors, super important guy in my life. He said to me when I was... I was just starting this podcasting journey and he said, Eb, it's more important to be interested. Yes. Than interesting. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. Um, I love that. And you're, you're right on point. Man. And that's, that's what makes a great podcast and a great, just a great conversation. That's what makes connection. You know what I mean? Cause exactly. like, you're just interested in knowing like what the answer to this thing is. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say this earlier. You've walked into rooms before. You've walked into rooms before, whether it was a friends and family gathering or a networking event or whatever it might have been. You've walked into rooms before. You've connected with people. You felt a resonance, a something inside of you that said, I like that guy. Mm. I connect with that guy, the words they use, their energy, 
how they communicate with you, how they look you in the eye, their body position, how they stand, how they speak, how they present themselves. It could be a fucking, it doesn't matter what they do, who they are, but it's how they are mm. and you connect with them. And then there are also people that yeah. you feel so you're like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe even your first impression of somebody is like, that dude's a fucking clown. Mm. That dude rubs me the wrong way. And then you might even go down the path of getting to know that guy or there's something about him that's enticing or inspiring or seducing, seductive. And you go, you know what? He's pretty cool. He does it. He has got a great business. He's got a great product. He's really smart. He's very charismatic, all this stuff. And you put that first impression in the back seat. And then something happens where your mm. first impression is validated and yeah. you go, Oh yeah, I knew that guy was that fucking was a fucking dickhead the first time I saw him. Yeah. <laughs> um now that's a more Uh, that's like, that's just, that's a little bit more removed than what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Actually. It's pretty good. It's you're I'll talk about following your intuitive guidance on that, right? Like being tapped and it's in. Like, yeah. And you know, I think that we come into contact with a lot of people. We, we, we have a lot of friendships in our life lives that for one reason or another, you drift apart, you lose connection. And it's just like, you know, I don't know that that relationship served its purpose during a certain time or at that time in your life, you connected on something that, you know, now a couple of years removed, you're not really in that same place and you don't connect on that same level. All I will say is, you know, and once again, you only know by being out on the field playing the game, yeah. not on the sideline. You can't make any of these decisions from the sidelines. You know, it's not like we're, we're on the sideline or, you know, up in our ivory tower going, yeah, that relationship, no, no. That relationship, yes. That relationship, no. It's simply this feeling. It's a feeling. It's a, it's an intangible experience of that person means a lot to me. Mm. And I have a sour feeling inside when I'm not spending enough time with that person. Mm -hmm. Or if my relationship with that person is not actively engaged or connected. And then there's other people. It's like, eh, no. Or you go out to dinner with the person or the people that, you're not really that sure about and you're at the dinner and you're going, Oh my God, what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what that. was it about? What yeah. was that? Me too, man. What was it about? It's 10 o'clock and you're at the dinner in fucking Santa Monica and you're like, why am I here? Yeah. Why am I here? Oh, I see. Because these people, I felt as though I needed to validate my self-worth through these people because of what they do or who they know. Ah, I see. I'm not going to do that anymore hmm. because I don't need to validate myself through anybody or anything anymore. You know, the only validation I need is doing exactly what I feel, feel compelled and fulfilled doing in my life that, that's really what i where i need to be spending my time with whomever fills that requirement or that um you know i get that's a little mechanical yeah I, I you know understand what i'm saying i do i do you know that, the yeah. people that there's a you know it's like you want to be around those people you know, you, it fills you with love and light and, and this lightness. 
you you know when there's a, you know when there's a hollowness right like you can't maybe describe Absolutely. the feeling so there's certain things people relationships uh hobbies passions whatever that can that can that can fill that because it comes from the inside it's a it's a longing for like my I think about my wife my boys my two kids you know like th- that I've been exactly in that scenario where I'm with people because of what they could potentially do for me externally validate yes. where exactly. I'm trying to go and I'm like I there's just something in here that feels like it's it's opening up and and in that in that void if the brain could be in the chest and the heart it, you know, the the physical picture is my kids my wife like why am i here my wife's at home watching tv while the kids are sleeping. stupid what am i doing here you know so i know yeah. exactly what you mean i don't know if i have i always say there's only 170,000 words in the english language and some of them there's just maybe not enough to describe certain things and i feel like that that feeling is one of them you know that feeling where you're at the high class restaurant with these yeah. high class people and you're every you're in the midst of everything you ever thought you wanted to be in the midst of and yet you're longing to be on the couch with your wife watching yeah. a show holding her hand yeah. <laughs> you know it what happens. i mean uh, repeatedly like, and, uh, of and, course and that, well that's the gift of you man to be honest with you like I, I follow your stuff we haven't met before today obviously but you you've become in some ways a walking reminder to follow that guidance system you have like your content the messages you have it's it's about it's everything you said today right going inside which is why i mean i, I could do this for four more hours to be honest with you but why i was so Me excited too, to get you on this podcast it was anyway but i want to respect your time we only have a couple minutes left so let's talk about this the book uh ebb and flow a fantastic book it's like a like a a tool belt of how to how to you know unlock and get in alignment with everything and honestly one of the stories that you tell in there I forget where it is, is you might've been nine or 10, you're getting moved to California and you're, you're how tall, what are you like six, five, six, six right now? Six, six. Yeah. yeah. So I'm five, seven. And I think you were my size at that age at like nine or 10 years old, <laughs> but you described yeah. this physical thrashing, right? Like this, this rejection of the idea of being pulled away. I just moved my kids to another country a few months ago. Uh-huh. Right. And uh-huh. my kids are, you know, my wife is five, two on five, seven. So my kids aren't that big, but my seven-year-old, I, I thought of him instantly when reading it. And it was like, man, is mm-hmm. there, is there an, is there an inability for him to be as demonstrative as a kid that was your size? Like when you throw a fit at that size, whoa, I can see it. Like, but is there something in him? I wonder that like, you know, he's very quiet, not quiet, but he's very accommodating. So is there something in him I'm not seeing? Am I not allowing for that five foot two, nine-year-old that you were to come out? I don't know why that struck me, but that was just one piece of it. And that's not what the book is all about. But let me let me ask it this way. What's your favorite part about the book, favorite chapter in the book? What is something in the book that you feel is like, I know it's it's like every chapter is your baby, but is there one thing in this book that you go, wow, I, I read this or wrote it and this one piece that came out just lit me up and I could see how that's going to serve humanity? Oh my God, it's such a great questions again, dude. <laughs> You're my best friend. I don't, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I can pick out one thing. All of those little anecdotes are very important pieces of my journey. The thing that for me, I'm actually most proud of in the entire book, and this might be funny, is that throughout, I am encouraging the reader to take everything I say and just throw it out the window. Mm. Because it's about what works for you. It's about learning about yourself and knowing yourself. And I call it the anti-plan plan. It's the anti-diet diet. And I truly mean that because this is what worked for me. And I believe these are truly, this is nothing new. I didn't invent any of this stuff. These are practices and tools that I've gathered along the way that brought me back to balance, that brought me back to myself, that brought me to peace. And they're very effective and essentially 
just about every single thing in there is free. It's something that you don't have to spend a dime to do, and you can do it all yourself. And I feel like, to me, the the crowning, my crowning effort in that book is assuring people and encouraging people that you are the answer and to find your whatever it is you're seeking out in your life self-love peace discipline ridding yourself of chaos doubt confusion it's about going inside yourself and tuning into you because you have the answers in there um when I read it, I am very proud of like, you know, those were some really fucking, I had a lot of fun writing it, you know, and I had a lot of fun sharing those, even those like really difficult and painful memories, like yeah. stuff with my parents and, you know, uh, little shades of my football career, and um, I'm really proud of it overall. And the the thing I'm most proud of is that in a world where everyone is telling you what the answer is and what you need to do to find wholeness or be successful, I created something that's that's telling people you need none of that, and it's about you, and you've got everything you need to be the greatest version of yourself that you were always destined to be. It's right there, you know, and it's really just about simple things. Breathe, like learn how to breathe, breathe deeply. It doesn't even have to, you don't even have to have a meditation practice. You don't have to have anything. If you're going through your life actively engaged in every single moment, in your feet, which I will say, I don't know if there's been a more challenging time to do that since we have this fucking thing in our pockets mm -hmm. and social media and all this mm -hmm. technology constantly swirling around us. There's never been a more difficult time to be present. However, if you every single day, moment by moment, breath by breath, one step at a time are cultivating awareness and stillness in yourself, feeling your feet on the ground, looking up at a tree and being there with the tree, just looking at the tree and observing it, not needing to be anywhere else. You are cultivating a deep level of awareness and you're sharpening your senses in a way that makes you a better individual, a stronger, more resilient, more engaged, individual that will be able to meet whatever moment arises with whatever that moment needs and requires and that's essentially what life is I that's love the that, game man. breath work and then we'll I'll, I'll end with getting uh some more information from you but breath work keeps coming up for i have a performance coach who is great with the mindset but always comes back to that okay now breathe right like the breath work mm -hmm. and i've been fortunate to become friends with a guy named sean casey who's uh he used to play baseball major league all-star for a few years and uh, i was just texting him today he was on ed my let's podcast and um he goes through on an episode that i did that's where i met him uh his at bat last at bat in the world series in like 06 and how it got down 02 the crowd is going nuts about to lose the whole world series he stepped out and went back to his breathing ritual and like did a whole clear the mechanism type of thing from the love of the game if you remember that movie like he's like it got uh -huh. quiet because he went back into the breath so the breath uh -huh. to your point it's this inc it's this thing that just happens but it's also this incredibly powerful tool that we all have that we can leverage and it's a great reminder for me Evan, Absolutely. where could people learn more about you, uh, anything you're, and where could people meet you, events, anything like that that you want to share? Yeah, brother. Thank you so much. Um, oh, thank Instagram, you. Instagram at EDS Britain. I'm on TikTok. Uh, forget what my handle is on TikTok. If you search Evan Britain, you'll find me. Um, EvanBritain.com is my website. It's got pretty much everything. 
available there. It'll link you out to all the different stuff. If you're interested in coaching, I've got uh, an event coming up in February, Heal and Flow. Look out for that. Would love to see you guys there. We do yoga, breath work, ice tubs, all kinds of good shit, mindset, motivation. You'll be ready to live in your highest greatness if you're not already. And also, it's just great to connect with like-minded people who are interested in being the best versions of themselves possible. Um, my book, The Ebb and Flow, Basic Tools to Transform Your Life, it's available on Amazon. Also, the audio book on Audible, Apple Books. I narrate that myself. And um, that's about it, man. <laughs> that's a lot and it's Evan yeah. written on tiktok just your name all one word on tiktok that's so right that's how folks can find you there and the website yeah website's comprehensive has everything about you so matt i can't appreciate you enough for jumping on and taking time and spending it with me here it's been absolutely amazing as i thought it would be so thanks again for doing this thank you jamie you're the best man i appreciate you we'll do it again sometime would love to would love to 